a good trip uh, Dubai is a diff different place uh, it's fortunate enough uh, through God's grace to be able to travel and I made some good uh, connections and uh, built some good relationships with kingdom not for personal benefit but with kingdom and advancement of the kingdom met some guys from TBN uh, UK and uh, so looking forward to the future and uh, what God is going to uh, do but there's no place like home you know you can go anywhere there's no place like home uh, you miss your uh, family your church your own bed even and uh, you miss you miss church as well you miss the fellowship and uh, you know uh, you don't realize how blessed we are uh, t when you travel overseas uh, especially a place like that uh, you know it's a Muslim country and uh, it's a beautiful place everything is magic uh, the design of the buildings the architecture the the scenery uh, it's a beautiful place but there's no place like home and also you know there's the culture we have here of God the God culture that we have you cannot get anywhere else in the world you know uh, they have prayer rooms their their prayer rooms in the airport uh, you go to the malls they have their own prayer rooms but uh, they, I feel for me personally there's no soul there you know there's no kingdom uh, there's no Christ there which is a very hard thing and if you're a dark skin like me most of you uh, that's a very hard place to be in because uh, they look down on people of uh, dark skin you know that's, a, that's the truth and all the people who do the menial tasks sweeping the streets uh, cleaning the toilets they are all dark skin like us Indians from India and so uh, it's a different it's a different place to be in and so appreciate home appreciate the God culture that you have here appreciate uh, uh, the kingdom culture you go to other parts dad sent an article last night uh, Barna research group that's uh, they do studies in America and they said that church attendance is on the decline in America and what that does is it affects the health of the nation you don't realize what church is doing to you and how it helps uh, they said divorce is on the increase depression is on the increase uh, suicides are on the increase because there is no church and so uh, you are fortunate tell your neighbor you are fortunate your parents force you to your wife forces you to come and pastor forces you to come to church uh, that's important and uh, we thank God say praise the Lord uh, but uh, this morning I want to share with you and I uh, have a topic it's a vague topic uh, but uh, you know uh, I don't really like titles but uh, it says uh, adversity always leads to opportunity adversity always leads to opportunity we're going to read Exodus chapter 1 verse 5 to 14 and it says uh, all those who were descendants of Jacob were 70 persons uh, Joseph was in Egypt already Joseph died all his brothers all that generation but the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty and the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel uh, are more mightier than we. Um, come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And it happened in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us. So, and so go up out of the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. They built Pharaoh's supply cities, Pithom and Ramses. But look at verse 12. This is what I'm focusing at this morning. Verse 12 it says, But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Say Amen. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. And so the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor, made their lives bitter. We thank God for his word this morning father we bless you we honor your name come on let's worship god just for a few moments thank you lord oh we love you lord we praise you we thank you for your word this morning we thank you for everything father you alone are my strength my shield to you alone will my spirit You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. 
Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for Christ that's here. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. May you speak to us and lead us today in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Thank you. Uh, well, so I'm grateful to share this morning and uh, thank you again for your support and prayer. Some of you are a little older like me and uh, I don't know if you remember the movie Gremlins. Anybody watch that movie Gremlins? And uh, it was kind of a little hor horror movie with uh, uh, some comedy here and there. And there was a man, he was looking for a unique Christmas gift for his son. Uh, and in an antique shop down in Chinatown, uh, he stumbles across this little cute creature uh, called uh, Mogwai. And uh, some of you, uh, who's watched that movie, Gremlins, many years ago? And uh, he, s he stumbles across this uh, creature, and he's got to have it, but the owner refuses to sell it to him. And after he leaves the store, uh, his grandson uh, sneaks out and secretly sells the Mogwai uh, to the man because his family needs the money. And so this uh, little creature, it might be cute, but it's not like your normal house pet, like your dog or your cat or your husband. Uh, there are some rules you have to follow. Um, and the boy says to him, uh, uh, first of all, uh, keep him out of the light. Uh, he hates bright light. Second, don't give him any water even to drink. And the third one is, uh, no matter how much he begs, don't feed it after midnight. And so the man agrees, and the Mogwai, he gives him a name, Gizmo. I don't know if you remember that. I grew up watching those movies. And uh, so uh, if you haven't seen the movie, you can imagine what happened. Um, it wasn't long before the rules were broken. Some water spilled on the Gizmo, and it began to multiply. And then uh, the other Mogwai, uh, they weren't as kind as this gizmo, the new ones. They used trickery uh, to get the boy to give them food after midnight. And then they cocooned like caterpillars, and they morphed into gremlins. And uh, the gremlin ringleader found a pool and jumped into it, and then it multiplied again. And uh, this was like a gremlin like some of our children, you know. And then, now this little handful full of gremlins, it multiplied into a swarm, a multitude uh, that practically, it terrorized that whole town. And the whole story is how they had to uh, defeat and, and capture those uh, gem, uh, gremlins. And so, in the passage that we read this morning, the story is very similar. Uh, and uh, uh, it's exactly how the Egyptians felt about God's people. They tried their best to stop them, but they couldn't. And uh, <coughs> uh, verse 12 says, they were in dread of the children of Israel. But this is not because the children of Israel were terrorizing uh, the Egyptians like these gremlins. Uh, this, uh, the Egyptians were afraid of the Israelites actually because of the promises of God. And this goes all the way back to the beginning when God blessed Adam and Eve. Remember God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. And so, uh, and, and fill the earth and subdue it. And then moving forward, God met Abraham. You know this, God met Abraham and promised that he would make him a great nation. Remember God told Abraham, he said, look towards the heaven, look at the stars, and uh, these are how your descendants shall be. They shall multiply as the stars. You cannot count the stars. And so, this account this morning, this is a continuing story of God's plan to make his name and his glory fill the earth as the waters covers the sea. And my brothers and sisters this morning, I want to start by telling you that nothing can stop or deter the plans of God. Nothing can stop the promises of God from being fulfilled in your life. That's a good place to say amen. You know, from generation to generation, God always keeps his promises. I've seen it in my life. You have seen it in your life. Over the years, new threats arise. New opposition arise. New enemies arise. Pandemics arise. This comes and all of that. But God's plan always prevails. Say amen. Come on. God's plan and his promises always come through. And surely, his plan for your life must come to pass. Tell your neighbor, praise the Lord. Come on. Adversity always leads to opportunity. 
In verse 5, 70 uh, persons, descendants of Jacob, they all went down to settle in Egypt. Uh, they went there because Joseph was now a prominent leader in Egypt. Remember how Joseph was beaten and betrayed by his Indian brothers. I'm sorry, why they were not in. He was beaten and betrayed by his brothers. Remember that? And uh, they, uh, they threw him in the pit because his father favored him uh, because of the coat. They threw him in the pit, threw, uh, sold him into slavery, lied that he was dead, all of that. The rest is history. And as you know, in Egypt, he became a very powerful and influential. And this is when he sent for his family uh, 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 to come to Egypt because he prepared a special place for them. Don't forget your family when you are blessed. Amen. But uh, uh, he went through that time where he was tested threw in the pit and all of that, then he became prosperous in Egypt. Say praise the Lord. <coughs> Adversity always leads to opportunity. And that's what I'm saying this morning. Joseph didn't get bogged down and disheartened by the challenges that he faced, being betrayed by his own people, all of that. Rather, he arose with strength. He arose with power and confidence in the favor of God. And God used him mightily. Adversity always leads to opportunity. Say praise the Lord. Come on, you are with me this morning. In verse 6, Joseph died. All his brothers, all that powerful generation of Joseph's uh, prosperity in Egypt, all of them died. Uh, while the Israelites, they continued to grow and be fruitful and multiply and fill the land. And verse 8 says, there arose a king. There was a king now. He did not know Joseph and all his exploits. This king, he had a look around. He saw that God's people were multiplying. That's why have more children. Shall not receive that anointing in Jesus' name. Uh, have more children. But he saw, and he saw that the children of God were multiplying. And uh, Israel were multiplying in numbers and mightier than the Egyptians. So the king devised a plan to persecute God's people. And he said, uh, he set task, taskmasters over them to afflict them with hard work and labor and afflict them with their burdens. Do you know that sometimes the enemy sees your success and devises plans to cut you down? Do you know that? The devil does that to us. I'm not talking about your wife. I sense some people are thinking, now, oh, my wife is... No, it's not about that. We want you to have a happy marriage. A happy marriage is where the husband gives and the wife takes. That's a happy marriage. And uh, I was traveling last week, and uh, I discovered, being away from home, I discovered a f uh, 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 how to transfer funds even faster than electronic banking. Anybody know? Uh, just by getting married, you know, you, the funds transfer faster than electronic banking. But, you know, yes, sometimes the enemy sees your successes and devises plans to cut you down. Uh, come on, don't live in a holy bubble. The devil is real. We know that. The devil is real. The devil is out there, but we don't place too much emphasis on the devil because our focus is on Christ more. But the thief is out there trying to rob, steal, kill, and destroy God's people. It's 2021 now. You must even upgrade your demons. Your phones have upgraded. Your televisions have upgraded to ULE, UED, whatever, LED, or your 4K and all of that. Your, your televisions have upgraded. And so upgrade your demons as well. Tell your neighbor, upgrade. Come on. <laughs> Don't worry about Madre Viren. That's uh, Ronnie Viren's sister. Don't worry about that, you know. Don't worry about Ronnie Viren or that spirit that makes you, you know, back in the days, that snake uh, spirit and all of don't worry about those things. Now, these uh, demons have upgraded into systems. Uh, systems that try to oppress. Egyptian systems like this try to oppress God's people, demoralize them, and keep them down. Heck, sometimes people in our lives see our successes, and they try to keep us down. So upgrade your demons. Tell your neighbor, upgrade. Come on. Even the demons. Yes. 
And this is what the Egyptian king, this Egyptian system tried to do. It tried to keep God's people down, setting task, taskmasters' burdens on them, made them work hard with um, rigor. And this is what the king tried to do. But here's the crux of my message to you this morning, found in verse 12. It says, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. Say hallelujah. Come. That verse alone inspires me and uh, uh, touches me. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Affliction is a state of being afflicted. It's a state of pain, distress, or grief. Uh, a cause of continued pain in your body or in your mind. Uh, it's a sickness, that's affliction. Um, losses or calamity, adversity, persecution, that's affliction. Uh, suffering, distress, distress, torment, torture. <coughs> Very much stuff. Coughing, uh, tribulation, anguish. Agony, hurt, misery, all of these are afflictions. And looking at these meanings of, of, uh, of the word affliction, uh, with the, uh, being described by torture and tribulation and anguish, uh, using all these words, one could get the idea that affliction is something that is sent to destroy the person, to destroy the person or the, the thing that it is sent to. And uh, when you use these words to describe the affliction, it, gets, it gives you the idea that it's sent to knock a person out, to destroy them. But when we're dealing with affliction, and when we're talking about God, it's a different story. When we're talking about God, we leave out a very important fact that can make all the difference. That's found in Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Verse 9, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Firstly, God is saying that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God is not limited in the way that our limited minds work. We use less than 10% of our brain's capacity. That's what they say. And if you watch TikTok videos, you find people use less than 1% of their uh, brain's capacity. And so, but TikTok is very entertaining. But, you know, uh, uh, how God thinks is not the way we think. Uh, you might be crying for days, for, for weeks about that guy that left you. But you don't realize that is the best thing that God did for you. You might be crying for that woman or that guy that left you. But according to God, that was the best thing that could ever happen to you. You might be obsessed, uh, upset or stressed about how situations turned out at your workplace or your business or your company or whatever it is. But actually, God was preparing you for something a thousand times better. Because uh, his thoughts are not our thoughts. You see, we don't see things the way God sees them. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And we cannot comprehend with our small TikTok minds. We cannot comprehend that. Secondly, God is saying his ways are higher than our ways. His ways are not limited like our ways. He often doesn't do things the way we would expect it uh, or the way conventional wisdom dictates. His ways are higher than our ways. Just like in 2 Kings 5.10, when he, Elisha instructed the mighty commander Naaman, Elijah instructed him, uh, he had leprosy. He said, simply go and wash seven times in the Jordan River to be healed of his leprosy. Uh, leprosy. Naaman, this uh, commander, he became furious. 
He became few. He expected the man of God to come out and say, my brother, in the name of Jesus, I pronounce you going to be healed. Right now at the count of one, at the count of two, at the count of three, in the ship. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. He expected T.D. Jacks, the type of, I don't know where that came from. I feel. I like to preach like that, but I, I just want to, I like to be myself as well. You know? But I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. But I, you know, I try to be myself. But, but you know, he ex that's what he expected. He expected a pomp. The festivities, uh, he expected that what Elisha would do, uh, wave his hand and prophesy. But instead, he received a simple instruction. Go, uh, let's use the Indian act, go and wash in the river seven times and you'll see what will happen. Finish. Right. You know, that's what, uh, that's what uh, uh, Elisha told him to do. But... Uh, uh, and so when he did according to this unusual command from God, the Bible says 2 Kings 5, 14, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. You see, God's ways are higher Hallelujah. than our Hallelujah. ways. Sometimes we fight and pray and kick and scream and bind and curse and all of that. But there's no need to do all of that. Because it's only when we are sick, not healthy, that God shows us he is our healer. It's only uh, when we are in lack, not abundance, that God shows us he is Jehovah, Jireh, our provider. It's only when we suffer defeats, not victories, that we realize God fights our battle. It's only when we are in trouble, not good times, that God shows us he can make a way where there seems to be no way. It's only when we are all alone and people fail us, God shows us, I am with you even unto the ends of the earth. It's only when there's a pandemic and the world seems to be falling apart that we realize God says to us, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. So God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Somebody here needs to thank God that that ugly person walked out of their life. You need to thank God for that. That, uh, that no good person walked off out of your life. Someone here needs to praise God that those mad people from the psycho ward, they spoke bad about you. You need to praise God. Those crazy people from Maritzburg, they spoke bad about you, gossiped you, ran you down. Forgive me if you have family from Maritzburg. But someone here needs to thank God that that deal went bad and you incurred some of the losses. It may not seem like it now, but his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And you know what? I'm glad I'm not in control of my own destiny. Because me, with my messed up mind, and you as well, uh, you with your stinking thinking, and me also with my stinking thinking, with my prejudice, my bias, your, your mindset, my inferior mindset, with my goldfish bowl mentality, uh, with your insecurities, your bad habits, uh, with all of that, we wouldn't be able to make things work. But with God, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With God, things that seem impossible with man are possible with God. With God, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Somebody say, praise the Lord. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. The Egyptians tried to keep God's children down, setting up taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. 
And uh, here's some thoughts for you to consider today. Are you blessed this morning? Here's some things that you uh, should consider. The more they afflicted them, the more they grew. Thank God for your afflictions. Amen. Thank God for some of them. And like I said, it's easy for me to say that. But, uh, you know, uh, here's some thoughts for you to consider. Number one, life may be hard, but stay focused on God. Exodus uh, 1, 13, 14, it says, So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor, made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar, brick, all manner of service, and all the service which they made them serve was with rigor. Sometimes life gets difficult. All of us, every single one, if you are alive, sometimes life will get difficult. Especially now with the pandemic, the state of the economy. Uh, I heard that fuel costs will rise again by a rand or so. And that affects everything else. Everything else increases. Rising electricity costs, high costs of living, uh, all of that. This Egyptian system's whole purpose was uh, to make life difficult difficult for God's people uh, to put them into hard labor, hard bondage, mortar and brick, service in the field, serve with rigor. And you know, sometimes the enemy uses these distractions as a tool to demoralize God's people, uh, to get us to give up, to quit, to stop pursuing all that God has in store for us. But despite all these setbacks that you and I face, we have to rise above it. Say amen, come on. We have to uh, rise, we have to stay focused on God. We have to keep pushing on, keep moving on, keep moving forward, uh, keep plowing the field, keep fighting, keep our eyes fixed on God and his ability to pick us up. Uh, we need to have thick skin. Tell your neighbor, thick skin. All of us, uh, we need to have thick skin. And that, by that, I mean that we must not cave into the hardships. When stuff comes, we must not cave in and give in to the hardships of the season. And uh, I, I'm saying, I'm not minimizing your troubles. I'm not minimizing what you are going through. Uh, and uh, the stuff that you are facing as an individual. Um, nobody else, because nobody knows what you are going through. I don't understand. I can have the best prophetic gift or wisdom and all of that, but nobody, not even your spouse sometimes, knows what you are going through. Nobody else can understand what you are feeling. Nobody else can understand what you are going through because they are not in your position. And we understand that. You know, I used to think that people who, who uh, get headaches and migraines, that they are just uh, complaining for nothing. You know, I used to think that, uh, uh, you know, I used to think, okay, if you have a headache, you know, a very harsh headache, then uh, I, I used to think, oh, but your hands can still work, you know, or your legs, you know, your legs are still coming, you know. And so... Uh, Mum and Shalda, they get these headaches all the time, not because of dad and me, you know, but, uh, or maybe that's the case, but, but they get these uh, headaches all the time. And, uh, you know, I, I used to think that, you know, these two women, they're just complaining for nothing. You know, they are weak, and <laughs> because they're fairer in our family, we are tough. You know, I thought they are just uh, complaining for nothing. Until for the past three weeks or so, I started having these headaches. And then, you know, uh, terrible ones. Where it stops you in your tracks. You can't focus. And, uh, you know, it was very bad. And now, then now, I had compassion on them. <laughs> you know? Now I, I understood, you know, uh, what mommy goes through. Sometimes she stays at home. She calls dad to rub her feet. He says no. And, uh, you know, uh, so I started, I, I, I it's true, dad knows. So, so now I understand, you know, the, uh, what they're going through. And, uh, you know, I, I had compassion, uh, thinking, okay, yes, they are really suffering, you know, or suffered. And, you know, 
Until you walk a mile in someone's shoe, only then you understand what are their choices and the reasons that they do what they do. You know, so you have to understand that. Until, until we lost my brother many years ago, then I understood real grief and what it is to face a loss and how people feel when they uh, lose somebody. Uh, and I had more compassion for people uh, suffering loss. And, uh, you know, but as tough as life may get brothers and sisters, you cannot afford to give up. You cannot afford to give up. You cannot afford to stay still or to camp at those problems. Uh, you have to keep moving. Tell your neighbor, keep moving. You have to keep moving forward. Don't watch the clock. Do what the clock does. It keeps moving. Don't stop. Do the clock keeps moving. You can shout and scream, speak in tongues. You can cuss and swear. FNB Stadium, all of that. You can do what that clock just keeps ticking. Do what the clock does. Winston Churchill said, if you are going through hell, keep going. And that's the truth. Don't stop for anything. You know, uh, Pastor Brian and his family, they faced severe losses and uh, all of that. But they are still here. Amen. I remember a week after their son passed the next service, they were there in the house of God. Uh, Auntie Babsy and their family, they faced losses. Uh, Auntie Feroza, she faced uh, so much of losses, but she's still here. Still keeping our, our family as well. So many of you face severe losses and problems during this pandemic. But keep moving. We have to keep moving. Why? Because the Bible says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Uh, Isaiah 43, it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Nor shall the flame scorch you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Life may be hard, but stay focused on God. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Say hallelujah. Come on. Secondly, uh, the enemy makes plans, but God counteracts those plans. The enemy can try what he wants. From verse 15, the Egyptian king, he made plans to destroy all the Hebrew males uh, in, a, in an effort to defeat God's people. He called the midwives. He said to them, if any of these Hebrew women give birth to a male, you must kill that male. And uh, you must destroy that male. Only allow the daughters to live. He tried to curb, curb, uh, the, curb the population and uh, destroy the people, uh, God's people, by that move. And uh, verse 17 says, But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they saved the male children alive. This was a national decree. This was a legislated law to kill all the males. Came from the head. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded. Again, verse 20, it says, The people multiplied and grew very mighty. Isn't that awesome? The devil can do all that he wants. He can throw this curveball at you. He can throw that problem at you. He can throw a spanner in your plans. Uh, he can throw the kitchen sink at you. But God's got you covered. God's got his own plans. God's got a different idea. You know why? Because we are favored by God. Say praise the Lord. If you don't believe that, look at Psalm 512. It says, For you, O Lord, bless the righteous one. You surround him with favor like a shield. Hallelujah. Look at that. God surrounds you with favor like a shield. Favor is not just for your blessings, whatever. It protects you. Hallelujah. 
It protects you from the plans. That means uh, his favor protects you, shields you from the enemy's plans, watches over you, thwarts the enemy's darts. Genesis 15, 1, do not fear Abraham, I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be great. Psalm 84, 11, the Lord God is a sun and shield. He gives grace and glory. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. You know what? The enemy can make his plans. People can make their uh, plans against you. Governments and institutions and corrupt people can make their plans against you. But God always counteracts. God counteracts those plans. People are worried about the vaccine, whatever, all of that. God counteracts man's plans. Don't worry about that. They can devise whatever. Because his favor is there like a shield to protect us from the enemy's darts. So don't worry what the devil throws at you, what you're going through at the moment. God counteracts those plans. So you don't have to be afraid. Say, praise the Lord. Come on. Thirdly, uh, and this is an important one, um, thirdly, thoughts to think about, uh, uh, to look upon. Build structure. Everyone say structure. Build structure into your life to house the breakthrough of God. In Exodus chapter 2, all connected, Mex Exodus, Exodus, Mexicans, um, in Exodus chapter 2, Moses was born. And uh, because of the, the wicked king's decree to kill all the male children, because of that, uh, Moses' mom hid him. You know the story. Hid him in the basket and uh, uh, hid him for three months. And when she could, uh, could no longer hide him, uh, she uh, made the little ark. Or say, say ark with me. Come on. She made the little ark or the basket. That's what Moses Mabina Stadium is modeled after. And uh, sent, it, sent it down the river. You know the story, Sunday school you learned. Sent that, us, uh, that uh, ark, <laughs> sent that ark, that basket down the river uh, to keep the boy alive. And uh, eventually, eventually the daughter of Pharaoh, uh, she found the basket and she called Moses' mom to raise the child. And uh, you know that later on, Moses became the greatest apostle in the Old Testament, and he delivered God's people. Exodus 2, 3, it says, uh, she daubed it with asphalt and pitch. She put the child in it and laid it in the reeds by the river bank. That basket, that structure that she put Moses in, that was kind of the, the vehicle that God used to protect Moses, yeah. to keep him safe down the river. And uh, that allowed for his future to be secure as the deliverer. In Genesis 16, you know, uh, God instructed Noah to build an ark. Um, and that structure, that ark would protect them, his family from the floods and from the storms and protected their future. Exodus, uh, Genesis 6.14, make yourself an ark of go forward, make rooms in the ark. God gave Noah detailed instructions the length 300 the width 50 the height 30 make a window door etc and that structure that Noah made that is what kept them that is what protected them from the floods that were coming and the destruction that was upon the earth uh, and then in Exodus 25 God also gave Moses uh, uh, patterns God gave Moses a structure to build. Uh, he gave him the dimensions for the Ark of the Covenant, the uh, table of showbread, the golden lampstand, and the tabernacle, uh, tabernacle. Gave them the dimensions. And that structure that they built, that housed and contained the glory of God. God's presence was there in the Ark and structure that they built. My brothers and sisters, if you want to stand the test of time and be able to stand the, against the attacks of the enemy, be able to stay here for the long haul, you have to build structures in your life. 
to house the glory of God. You have to build structures in your life, like the Ark of Moses, like Noah's Ark, like the tabernacle, that will be able to house the blessings of God, that will be able to house and carry the glory of God, that will be able to carry you through the storms, the winds, the floods, and everything that comes in your life and preserve your future. What is that structure? What is the structure I'm talking about? That is a teaching on its own. Dad can talk to you about that. But all that we are learning in the house of God, that is the structure to house the glory of God. The culture of the house, apostle doctrine, Acts 2.42, apostle doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, prayers, all of that. That's the structure. The structure of having a spiritual father in your life. This is what keeps your house uh, growing and afloat. The structure of having a disciplined lifestyle. That's what helps you. The structure of sowing, of praying, of interceding. The structure of being present when the body comes together. All of that. That's the structure that we have to build in our lives to house the glory of God. Just like the foundations and, and the columns, the beams and the, the walls in a building are the structure that keeps it up, keeps it uh, standing. We have to build structure into our lives to house the presence of God. Our young people need this. All of us need this so that our future is safe in God. And Moses, uh, Moses uh, his mother, built this ark in the context of the story. And that ark is what preserved Moses to become the, the, the deliverer. And so I'm saying today, thirdly, build structure into your life to house the breakthrough. Say structure, come on. And lastly, I can see some of you are tired. Lastly, uh, your response to God, your response to God is what sets the breakthrough in motion. Yes, it's true, the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. But ultimately, the catalyst for the deliverance of God's people was when uh, Moses met God at the burning bush and God began to speak to him and commission him uh, and he accepted the call of God. God uh, spoke to him and uh, when he turned aside to see the, the burning bush, that's when God began to speak to him. My brothers and sisters, your response to God is very important. Um, God is continuously calling upon us and knocking at our heart's door. God is always trying to speak to us. But how we respond to him is very important. Are you ready to let God in? Uh, to have him con take control of your life? Are you surrendered uh, totally to him? We can gauge this by the way that we act. Um, you can, we can gauge your response to God by your actions, how you serve God, how you worship him, how you honor him, how you desire to meet him, how you desire to fellowship with his people. And, you know, at this point in time uh, when God met Moses, he was washed up. He was much older now. He was taking care of animals in the desert. And... Uh, uh, he was uh, uh, he was uh, he was significantly uh, significantly past uh, his his prime maybe, and uh, he was a fugitive. He was a murderer as well, but God took this insignificant uh, desert dweller, and God made him a deliverer of destiny. God made him a deliverer of destiny, and it doesn't matter how bleak things may seem at the moment, respond to God and let him take you to your destiny. It doesn't matter how great the losses have been, God can restore what you have lost. It doesn't matter how harsh the troubles and the extent of your troubles, as you let God take control and respond to him, he will restore all that you have lost. Because the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And uh, afflictions are stepping stones to God's greater plans. You know, uh, in closing, I want to tell you 
a, a wonderful story that I read about. And it's a story about the cushion of the sea. Everybody say cushion. The cushion of the sea. There was a submarine being tested and uh, it had to remain submerged underwater for many, many hours. And um, when it returned to the harbor, uh, the captain asked, uh, was asked, the captain of the submarine was asked, uh, how did the terrible storm last night affect you? You get the picture? So the submarine comes back to the harbor and the captain of the submarine was asked, how did you, uh, uh, how did the terrible storm last night affect you? The officer uh, looked at him uh, in surprise and said, what storm? What storm are you talking about? And uh, he didn't even know that there was a storm, the captain of the submarine. Because the, sub, the submarine had been so far beneath the surface of, of the waters that it had reached an unknown area, an area known to sailors as the cushion of the sea. There is a place called the cushion of the sea. And, uh, you know, although the ocean may be whipped, by, uh, uh, whipped into huge waves by the winds and the waters, uh, and uh, the storms that are above, the waters below are never stirred. The waters there at the cushion of the sea, they are never stirred. They are never affected there at the cushion of the sea. And uh, this is how our lives must be, brothers and sisters. Although there's adversity, there's obstacles, there's trials, there's winds and storms, and hurricanes that come against us. But because God is holding us in the palm of his hand, in the cushion of the sea, we are there at that point with him, in the cushion of the sea, where the winds, the storm, they cannot affect us. In fact, the more they afflict us, the more we multiply and grow. And we will be protected and shielded, resting in the goodness of God. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. That's the crux of my message to you this morning. You are there in the cushion of the sea, in Christ. Christ is that cushion. Christ is that comfort. Christ is that peace that we have. So let's stay positive. Uh, despite all the stuff you may be facing, uh, I don't know what your situation is. Despite everything you're going to, um, stay positive, get excited about what God is going to do. Because the more they afflict you, the more you will multiply and grow. You may not see it, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So respond to God. Put those structures in place. We need those in our lives. And uh, as dad was saying over the past few weeks, a new season is here. Amen. A new season is here. A new horizon is visible. And a new day is dawning. Come on, let's stand and pray uh, this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just lift up our voices to the Lord this morning. We worship you, our Father. We worship you, O God. We magnify the name of Jesus. We glorify the name of the Lord. We worship you. Let's sing together still. Let's just sing the chorus. I
Is somebody tired this morning? God's going to give you rest. By Raise your hands to the King. Know His power. And quietness. Come on, somebody. God's coming to your rescue. Oceans rise and the roar. I was so. Lift up your hands as Pastor Brian prays for us. The troubles can't stop you, can't stop your family, can't stop your increase, can't stop your promotion, can't stop your blessings. The more the trouble comes, the more you're going to grow, the more you're going to prosper. That's the declaration of the Lord. You don't care what the enemy says, what the world, the world says, what anybody else says. You are a child of God, blessed of God. The anointing of the Spirit of God upon you this morning. Okay. Agree this morning. Thank Walk out of this place with the blessing of Thank God you. for you. this week and the day. Thanks, Pastor Brian. Pray for us Hallelujah. this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. Come, just lift up our hands to the Lord this yes. morning. Yes. We Father. lift our hands with thanksgiving. Yes. yes. We've come here, Lord, to thank you, Amen. to bless you, Amen. and to praise you. We come very humbly before you. Yes. We bow before you and we salute you. Lord, with a heart of praise, yes. with a spirit of thanksgiving. Amen. We say thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the way your hand is upon our life. Hey. Thank you for all the things that yes. you do for us. Thank you for the way you help us to overcome. Hey. My God, we would not be here if it wasn't for you. You are the one that helps us to overcome in our hey. daily life. Yeah. Thank you for your hand upon our life. Thank you for your hand upon our home. Thank you for your hand upon our family. My God, we love you. We cherish you. We bless you. We praise your name. We thank you for all that you mean to us. Thank you for all the things that you do for us. The way you help us to claim our mountains, oh God, in our life. We love you. We cherish your name, Father. We bless your name. We thank you for your word today. We bless you for your son that shared your word to us this morning. Thank you for the obstacles. Thank you for the adversity, Father, uh, 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 that we go through in our uh, life. Uh, Hallelujah. We pray there's a reason for that adversity. There's a reason for that challenge. You want to lift us up from where we are. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank Amen. you. Our Amen. eyes will be upon you. Whoa. We will look to you. We'll call upon your name. We know, Lord, our help cometh from thee. Oh, so bless us here this morning. God. Have your end upon us, Father. Continue to stir us. Lord, we pray today in the name of Jesus, even as your son spoke, Lord. Lord, you saw you, Miriam, Lord, the, 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 the mother of Moses, Joseph, built an ark, Father. And Lord, he built an ark, Lord, to leave that baby Moses Amen. in that ark. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we will build our own ark, that we will be safeguarded, protected Amen. at all times. Like Noah, we'll build, Lord, our ark also, like Noah. Father, we'll be safeguarded against every storm. Thank you for your son. He said, Lord, there will be a cushion like the submarine. Ah. I believe, we believe here this morning, oh, no matter what may come Whoa. our way, Lord, we will experience the Whoa. cushion of our Lord. We will be safely guarded, we'll be protected by the hand of the living God. So bless your children today. Have your hand upon your children. Lord, a special prayer for all those ones that believe the Lord, the Lord, lost loved ones. Amen. We come with them all as unto Amen. you. We bring a family yesterday that had a Thanksgiving because of a loss. We bring Pastor Prem before you and many others, Lord, Amen. that they had lost in their life. Amen. We just pray, Lord, that you will just bless them in a special way. 
Father, we pray a special prayer for your son that shared the word today. Lord, even though the nation of Israel grew, and Lord, his plan was to him and his wife to grow also. We pray today that you'll just bless him, bless his dear wife. Lord, there'll be an increase in his home and in his family like the children of Israel. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, the fire's not going to stop me. The storm's not going to stop me. The winds are not going to stop me. Bad people can't stop me. Good people can't stop me. Nobody can stop me. Come on, afflictions. We'll keep on going. Somebody shout to the Lord. Woo! Amen. Hallelujah. Be seated for a few moments. Thanks, Pastor Sid. Give the Lord a good praise offering. Now give thanks to Pastor Sid. Amen. Thank you, Sid. You blessed our hearts. The Lord bless you. Thank you, everybody, for coming this morning. There's a few more announcements. Please remember, next Saturday is our cleanup operation here, the 30th. We'd like you to be here. Please come here. After the cleanup, we're going to be having lunch together. Lunch is provided. Bring your children. Teach them to look after the environment. We're going to clean the area from, um, from uh, on View Haven Drive, from Forest Haven Drive up to the mosque down here at Woodview Drive. We have several teams. They're going to be doing this. Come, ladies, gentlemen, everybody. The work is going to be light. Chris is bringing his truck. Uh, Brother Ravi is bringing his truck. We have the Bobcat there. The city council is coming with all stuff. So please, we want you to be there. Send your names through. We want God to bless you and God to honor you. Remember that. Yeah, if you've got some equipment, some rakes and some uh, uh, picks, anything else, wheelbarrows, bring them. So the Lord bless you. Don't forget, Tuesday night is a prayer meeting. The church office is open all week, Sunday, 7.30 and 9.30 a.m. There are services here. Please come. The bus, excuse me, the buses will be running. If you're over 18, get the vaccination. Oh, 12. 12 years old and older. Get the vaccination. Uh, the flowers came here.